The Gophers have been ravaged by the portal. They haven't been getting wins and the hits keep coming. But how do we stop the bleeding? That's what we're talking about today at Locked On Golden Gophers. Hey, you are no Locked happens, On Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week. And we got a lot of hoops to talk because the portal has just been picking apart these basketball teams. And where do we go from here? How do we improve? How do we get better? How do we take the next step to get out of the cellar because that's where the Gophers are right now. Plain and simple. I'm not pulling any punches. The Gophers are in the cellar of the Big Ten and they have to find a way to claw out of this thing. Now, is a coaching change coming? I don't think so. So how do we get there? How do we get to the next level and find ourselves competing and in the hunt and a team that people can't sleep on every night? That's what we're talking about today. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube. Again, this is the show where we always continue to row. I haven't said that in a while, but it is. And now is the perfect time to prove that with the programs that are struggling in the hoops department. And we're going to be talking about it all offseason, hoops, football. And of course, we're going to talk some hockey tomorrow with the Big Ten Championship lined up to play in Dinky Town at Mariucci Arena against Michigan. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything and follow wherever you get your podcasts. But let's talk some hoops. Let's dive in because the hits keep coming. Now, we knew that Jamison Battle and Talon Cooper were likely not going to be back with the team. They were set to test the pro waters, but it seems like Even after being evaluated, both are going to be headed to the portal. Now, that is something that wasn't necessarily anticipated. It was seen as, oh, both these guys are going to go test the pro waters. Even if it doesn't mean NBA, even if it means G League, Euro League, you name it, they're not going to be back with the team. And that was acceptable. You're like, okay, I get it. Go do it. Do your thing. But then we find out they're going to get evaluated, get their evaluations, and then hit the portal and hope to increase their draft stock possibly or get better evaluations for next year. And that one hits different, especially with Jamison Battle, because a lot of people maybe thought, you know, he would be back here if he was not going pro. And that's not the case, it looks like. So it's a tough pill to swallow for some Gophers fans. Others, maybe you're cheering it on. Maybe you're ready to move on. Whatever it is, it was unexpected in that capacity. But Jamison Battle might have NIL opportunities, and that might have piqued his curiosity towards another year in the NCAA with a different program. If that's what it is, you know what? It's unfortunate. It stinks. We don't have that NIL foundation quite as built up here yet, and hopefully that is to change in future years, but it's tough. So that leaves one player graduating in Torres Samuels and four players in the portal for the men's basketball program. Jameson Battle, Talon Cooper, Jaden Henley, and Trayton Thompson. Now, we had speculated on the show, Henley and Thompson were both guys that maybe we thought would transfer anyway. I'm not arguing against that per se, but what I am slightly concerned about is the turnover year after year so far now. This 2022 season, those four players, I'm not even counting Torres Samuels in this one, those four players that have hit the portal accounted for 48% of the minutes played for the Gophers, 44% of the points scored for the Gophers, 66% of the assists for the Gophers, and 45% of the rebounds. That is a whole lot of production leaving the team. And now some people might be like, well, we only won nine games or we only won three Big Ten games. You're right. It was tough. It was bad. But if you're constantly losing that production and having that great of a turnover every single year, you're never going to get out of the cellar. You're never going to be able to build up to do what Northwestern is doing right now. They came from the cellar, and after four or five years, they're now finding themselves second in the Big Ten in the NCAA tournament, getting a win in the first round. That is what the Gophers are hoping to get more towards, building that 
program up, building that consistency, building that momentum. But you can't do that if you're losing a vast amount of production every single year, year in and year out. And now this will be heading into year three, back to back years where we're losing a vast amount of production. So how do we stop that? How do we get that to be less? Maybe you're only losing 20% in those areas as opposed to nearly 50% in every category. To, to stress it even more, there are no players on next year's roster that will have more than one year of time with Minnesota yet again for back-to-back -back years. It's just a tough thing to find sustainable success if you can't keep the players to sustain it or even build it, start to grow it. So how does Minnesota right the ship? What changes need to happen? Is it fundamental changes? Do you have to change the approach that maybe you wanted to take on offense? Do you have to scrap it and be a defensive focused team? How is it? Is it the smaller things that'll help build or is it small scale coaching changes? Do you bring in another assistant coach that has a different mindset that came from a winning program to help mesh together with your current system and help breathe life, new life into the program? Or is it the whole shebang? Is it a whole coaching staff change? Now, I don't think it's that one right now. I don't think you're going to see that even if it's what you want. So let's be realistic here. It's probably one of the two other options we just said, either fundamental changes or small scale coaching, coaching adjustments, whether that be an addition, whether that be in a subtraction, whatever it is, something has to change. Now, on most occasions you need a coach you need to give a coach three to four years to really let them get their recruits in and their system into place to give them a fair evaluation but that being said no one promises you a fair evaluation so year one there was tons of incoming transfers with all the departures of the coaching change minnesota finishes at the bottom of the big 10 they were missing two contributors in parker and enan Four recruits coming in, four players returned from that roster for the next year. You head into new year two, the first official recruiting class in tow, and you have two impact transfers come in. Minnesota again finishes at the bottom of the barrel, missing two big contributors once again. Two recruits are set to come in, then all of a sudden one requests a release, the highest rate of recruit in the class, and many players depart via transfer and now you have seven players likely returning unless more hits come so next year what happens does dawson want to take a look at the pros parker will be out of eligibility after a year enan he might have one more year of eligibility after that but what does he want to do further from there you're seeing how that sustained success that production could be gone again or a good chunk of it could be gone again next year and that is tough so the moral of the story is if you can't keep a large majority of our players to build and develop then this process is not going to be sustainable and help building up upward for the program so fair shake or not there could be major questions asked if there isn't significant improvement improvement next year in the year of 2023-24 Otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. So where do we go from here? Why would an athlete pick here? We're going to head into the transfer portal. We're going to be looking at guys to help fill a majority of spots. I believe there's five openings now for the Gophers. So where do we go from here? Well, when answering the question, why would you choose Minnesota? Why would you come here? Right now, you can't say winning. You can't say um I mean, maybe you could say the culture because it seemed like that was building strong, but you're losing the staples of your culture. Like you said, Jameson Battle was a staple in this program and he helped build the culture. And now he's moving on to another opportunity. Uh, you just have a no, no players beyond having more than one year of experience. So it's hard to say that culture is the staple or the foundation, no matter how good it feels to be a part of the program, to feel like you have a family, to feel like brotherhood. It's hard to state culture as a factor right now when people are consistently leaving. So you can't really say culture. You can't really say winning. You can't really, like, where do you go? We don't have NIL to give these prospective players to get them to want to commit here right now. Those are a lot of things that other schools are able to pull these guys in from. So why Minnesota? And I think the biggest thing, at least for these next couple of years, is playing time opportunity and the opportunity to play in a major conference. So I think you really got to attack the low majors. You have to try to find these guys that maybe aren't 
hundred percent sold on the program, but they want to come in, see the facilities, see the workout facilities, see the locker rooms and everything like that and get a feel for, oh yeah, this is the top quality facilities and whatnot. And then on top of that, you're letting them know this is one of the best conferences in basketball. You're going to have a chance to play starter minutes here. You're going to have a chance to be a high contributor here. And you want to attack that and eventually build it to be more of the program and within the culture, within the program, build more of a coaching relationship, build more community love and the opportunity to be competitive in a top conference. That's what we want to strive for. But right now, I think the biggest sales point is minutes opportunity in a high major conference. So you got to buy into it, but will that work for guys like Mike Mitchell Jr., who seems to be a high priority prospect for the Gophers, plays a very similar role to Talon Cooper, maybe shoots the three point a little bit better, shoots free throws a little bit better. But as far as stylistic game, their scoring is fairly similar. Their assist is fairly similar. Their defensive prowess is fairly similar. It's not something that's a top notch defender. They'll get you steals and whatnot here and there, but you see the you see what I'm saying here is it's a very similar role. Now he could come here and be a starter, but you're probably going to have the same concerns that you had with Talon Cooper that you had with Mitchell if he chooses to come here because he has multiple offers. So Nick Timberlake, Jordan Taylor, guys who also are of interest for the Gophers, will just getting opportunity at a high major be enough to bring those guys in? We're going to find out soon, but that's where our focus needs to shift. But now what happens internally? What happens with guys like Dawson Garcia, Pharrell Payne? What do they need to work on this summer in order to help the Gophers take a step, even if we can't bring in huge impact transfers? What are the dirty details to get this thing moving in the right direction? That's what we're talking about coming up next. First, a message to you from our friends over at FanDuel, who is official sports betting partner of Locked On. And you can take advantage of a no sweat first pet. Get it before it is gone, folks. So you get out there, you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On, and you take advantage of a no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. That means if you lose, you still have a chance at money coming back to you in your account. The app is safe, secure, and simple to use. You can bet on things from players, uh, player props, points, rebounds, you name it, or you can bet on the games themselves, the money lines, the spreads, the total points, all of that and more. And you can even do a same game parlay to help increase your winnings. If you hit, why not take a chance? You win when you win and you even get a chance at bonus bucks if you lose. So head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on to take advantage of this no sweat first bet, get it before it's gone and make every moment more with FanDuel official sportsbook betting partner of Locked On. Now, Gophers fans, thank you so much for listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. And we're talking hoops today, but we can't talk hoops without talking March Madness. If you want to find out all the latest stories, all the biggest hits when it comes to that college basketball tournament, head on over to Locked On College Basketball, one of the newer shows on the network. And you can find out the top stories that are trending within college basketball. They're killing it over there. So be sure to give them a second or give them a follow and make them your second listen as as we move forward to the end of March. Now we're talking Gophers hoops. We're not in the tournament, obviously, but let's talk about what these players have to do this offseason in order for us to continue to take that next step and try to build this thing up. Each player has momentum, has things they need to work on in this offseason to help the Gophers try and increase, be more competitive, and get to maybe even the middle of the pack of the Big Ten and start to be competitive, try to make a run at these tournaments, try to not be slept on all the time. So what do these players have to do? Well, Dawson Garcia is the player at the top of the list. He is the go-to guy for the Gophers. And you know what? The offense has to funnel through him, plain and simple. We saw it towards the end of the season, towards when we were getting a couple of those conference wins and making a little bit of noise here and there. The offense was funneling through Dawson Garcia inside, outside. He was getting touches. Even if he wasn't getting scoring looks all the time, he was getting touches. Now, the final game of the year... We didn't see as much, um, and the Gophers really got throttled with the lack of scoring by Jameson Battle and by Dawson Garcia. Well, we can't have those type of nights. We have to have Dawson Garcia getting double-digit points basically every night to be in the game. That's, that's shown itself, plain and simple. When he was gone, we struggled a lot. 
when he was there and he didn't get the opportunities to score and help the Gophers stay in this thing, we usually got beat by double digits. So Dawson Garcia is the center point of this thing as these young players come together and get that that upward momentum going, start to build their game, start to progress and be Division I Big Ten level basketball players so funneling it through him allowing him to work inside out I think that's huge but what Dawson has to do is continue to develop more consistency and a more a more fluid a more basically get hot a lot quicker from his spots know what his spots are and become automatic from the spots is where I'm trying to go from there he's a grinder and the key will be for him to be automatic especially inside when it comes to finishing close to the hoop the hook shots the layups finishing through contact as he gets more and more of those to become automatic and folks have to double him inside that will help the gophers open the floor on the outside and get guys shots in the three-point area get guys shots in the mid mid range from the elbows get guys to their spots because we're doubling down on Dawson and kicking it to the other guys to swing the basketball and get those open nice looks to then convert more field goals and a better field goal percentage by getting higher percentage looks for the other players on the team that is going to be immense for this team if we can't do that we're going to find ourselves down in the bottom once again so he should always touch the ball even if it's not a scoring look each time but Dawson Garcia becoming more automatic inside because his outside game is already a threat his mid-range game is a threat just being who he is and the ability he has but if he becomes automatic on the inside and becomes a guy that you cannot leave one-on-one within the paint within that that cylinder Look, it makes it a lot harder to guard the Gophers, and they need that because if they're guarded one-to-one, this field goal percentage just isn't there, and it's not. We saw that firsthand, lots of cold streaks this year. So this is a way to attack it and give better looks for these younger players. Now, moving to the younger players, let's talk about Pharrell Payne. Pharrell Payne, we saw a lot of upside there. He has some an interior presence, but he gets into a lot of foul trouble. So staying out of foul trouble is going to be huge for Pharrell Payne. So getting stronger is going to be a priority, number one, but also playing under control and knowing when to be extra assertive defensively. There's not, he can't go all out all the time. We saw that when that happens, he gets early fouls and then we have to take him off the floor and take him off the floor hurts this team because he is a valuable, highly talented, high ceiling player when he gets more and more opportunities and he gets into the flow of the game. We've seen him lead in scoring on all three of the games against Maryland, who is a tournament team and won their first game. He can be that more often if we can keep him on the floor more often. So he has to be able to get stronger, but also know when to be extra assertive defensively. And I think that comes with a lot more film study this offseason and kind of seeing how the other bigs in the Big Ten do it best. He should be watching Zach Eady. He should be watching these other post presences in the Big Ten and how they hone in on when to be extra assertive and when not to be what times what points in the game are they starting to take over and be more aggressive and what times are they not laying back not being uh mellow but being able to help assist others and be a defensive help but not aggressive to the point where you're going to get in trouble those are the biggest things i think coach ben johnson will work with him on that in the offseason regardless but that is going to be a focus for him Moving it to Braden Carrington, he's got to get stronger and he's got to be able to specify or specialize in specific roles. He's a defensive, he has defensive presence. He can be a lockdown on the defense. We've seen it in moments. He played Jameer Young great in that Maryland game for the most part, up until the end of the game where he was gassed and you could see he was tired. He was on the floor for a majority of the game. But when he is asked to take on bigger defensive challenges. He has stepped up in moments for the Gophers. And I think as that continues to grow and he gets stronger, he builds more into it. I think he's going to be a defensive problem for a lot of guys in the Big Ten. And then you add up, he has that three-point ability. We've seen it. A lot of Gophers fans expected it coming in and it wasn't as consistent, but it started to come alive towards the end of the year, getting healthier as he went on. So working to find his spot on the three-point line and then locking in on those areas and being a defensive ball hawk I think that will help take the next step for next season. 
Ola Joseph, he's got to develop a consistent mid-range and long-range game. Being more confident in his shooting will help take him to a next tier in the Big Ten, to a next level in the Big Ten. He is an athletic freak. He has the size. He has the build right now to be a bully in the Big Ten. But if he can get his ball handling up and he can find a, and develop a consistent shot from the mid-range or the long-range, it will cons- seriously take him to the next level. If he plays with that controlled aggression, which we've seen in spurts here, he can kill it. And he led the team in three-point percentage, but he didn't shoot very many threes. So if he can build his confidence here and he can make that a tool in his arsenal, he can be a Big Ten player, a starter. Well, he started a, a decent amount of games this year, so I won't say a starter, but he can be a really good player for this Gophers team if he can take the step to being a more confident and consistent shooter from longer ranges. Now, the two players, uh, I'm not going to talk too much on Cam Christie because we still got to see how he translates to the Big Ten. Hopefully, he can step in and make an impact right away. We'll see what happens there, but he is a good uh, shot creator. He is a good off the dribble. He can hit the three-point shoot, or he can hit the three-point shot. I'm excited to see what Cam Christie brings, but again, that could take time. You can't necessarily rush freshman to the court. Hopefully, he's ready to play, but... He could need some development too. We'll see what happens there. But the biggest player I want to talk about is Caden Betts. Caden Betts is the player I want to focus on because a lot of people probably have forgotten about him. He redshirt this year. He reclassified. So he really should be a 2024 freshman or 2023 freshman. My bad. Um, But he reclassified to the class of 2022 kept his red shirt, but worked with the team all season, playing against guys like Jameson Battle in practice, going up against a growing Josh Ola Joseph with his confidence, going against Jaden Henley, going against Dawson Garcia. A whole year of that as a basically senior in high school should only help him in his development. So for Caden Betts, it's playing like a sophomore from the jump. Yes, the game speed could be a little bit of an adjustment because he didn't get into the actual games, but That was a large part of why he reclassified so he could get that early help. He could continue to build in the strength and weight uh, weightlifting program. So to constantly work around the program and develop should play in his favor. But I want people to remember Caden Betts, the prospect, because he was getting looks by University of Virginia, who is consistently one of the better teams in the ASC or in the ACC, even though they got knocked out early again in the tournament, but we're past that. He was getting offers and looks from Iowa. He was getting looks from Utah, who is a number two seed in the tournament. He's getting look, or they might be a two seed in the women's tournament. Let me back that up because I don't think Utah is actually in the men's tournament, but still Utah has been up and down when it comes to a program. Nebraska was giving him looks. So he was getting looks from other high major teams. He's dangerous from the three point line and showed that at the high school level, he can create his own shot, which is going to be huge for this Gophers team that struggled to do that this season. So he's a four-star talent. Uh, Ryan James was preaching him all before he committed. So he was definitely early there and, Ryan James knows his stuff. I'm going to give it to him. So what I'm trying to say is don't sleep on Caden Betts. Now versus D1 Minnesota with Tyson Chapman prior to him committing here last summer, he went up against them. He played D1 Minnesota and he was a top that's full of top tier Minnesota prospects. And he dropped 23 points with four three pointers on those guys. In a huge tournament in Atlanta, he had dropped 43 points, hit seven three pointers, had rock solid defense, seven for eight from the free throw line. 15 rebounds, and he had the last game shot to send his team to overtime. That is the potential. So if he can continue to get stronger and the game did slow down and he can play like a sophomore from the jump as a redshirt freshman, he will be a very key piece to this Gophers team. And I am excited to see what the future holds for him. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we get to our final topic is talking about transfers. Now, you'd love to have scores, but I think a lot of Gophers fans get too caught up in how many points a guy scores. That's not what you're looking for when you're coming to building a roster and building a team. Yes, you would like guys that can hold their own and find their shot, but a lot of people wanted Talon Cooper to be this 14, 15 point guy. That's not what he was brought here to do. He was brought here to facilitate. He was brought here to contribute in all around facets. So getting rebounds, being able to contribute here and there on defense. But that was a a struggle of his. There was a chance that that might not translate right away. So don't expect the Gophers to go out here and get 17 point scores, 15 point scores immediately from the jump. 
but you're looking for players to play within the system, play their role and contribute to the larger goal. That is how the Gophers are going to be able to build it forward. So we need a facilitator and a ball hander. We likely need two, to be honest. So you're looking in that. We need interior defense because when Pharrell Payne gets in foul trouble, we're in trouble. So we need an interior defender. We need two facilitators and ball handlers. We need a three-point ace, someone that, again, doesn't have to score 20 on all threes. But when you give him the ball to shoot three threes in a game or shoot five threes, you want him to hit three of those and be so consistent from the three-point line that he can get you out of trouble in a hurry. That is what they need. Again, it doesn't need to be 15 point guys a night, but when called upon for their roles, they come through in those roles. That is what this Gophers team needs. So keep that in mind as we look towards transfers, but we're going to wrap this thing up talking about the most impactful transfer loss, in my opinion, I think of all the transfers we've seen in this 2022 season across all sports, there's one that hit me the hardest. And that's what we're talking about coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Built Bar. See, Built Bar is that 100% covered in real chocolate protein power pack bar that has 17 grams of protein, but only about 130 calories, four grams or less of sugar. Look, I'm telling you right now, it hits the spot. It tides you over. It helps you from lunch to dinner, breakfast to lunch, after a workout, you name it. It hits the spot. It fills you up and it, it can just... I don't get how they can do it all, make it taste good, and it's good for you. Like, what? How often does that happen? But it does with Built Bar. So let's talk about what is happening with Built in the March Madness Tournament. Because the Built March Madness bracket is here. And we know you have a favorite bar or puff if you've tried them out there. And it's now time to make your opinion and your vote count. If you go to BuiltMarchMadness.com, you can vote for your favorite bars. And then when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky lockdown listeners will get a free box of Built Bars. That's right, a free box. And not only that, but one locked on lucky winner will get a 12 month subscription to Built to have the best Built Bars delivered to you every month straight to your door. You got to try it. Built is the best protein bar out there ever. Seriously, it's amazing. It's good for you. So take a shot at it. Definitely head on over to that BuiltMarchMadness.com and get in on the vote today. All right, Gophers fans, we're wrapping this one up with a little bit of negative news, but of all the portal departures across this year, across all teams, there's one that hit me the most, and that says a lot, because you're talking about in a list of Jamison Battle, Talon Cooper, Flip Dixon, Jenna Wienis, uh, Carter Booth, Tristan Braz, Beanie Bishop, Donald Willis, Braylon Oliver, Jaden Henley, Trayton Thompson, Michael Brown Stevens, Trey Potts, Cameron James, Stephen Ortiz Jr., Austin Booker, Gage Keys, Jalen Glaze, Ike White, all of those players hitting the portal. And the one that hit me the most is Rose Misha of the women's basketball team. Now, some of y'all may have forgotten a few of those players that I named and how many people have hit the portal for the Gophers in this time. But I truly believe Rose Misha and the impact she had on this women's team, the leadership she brought to this team is going to be felt the most. Now, that's not saying that the Gophers women can't have progress and have a good season next year because I absolutely think they can especially if they're able to maintain all four freshmen and Katie Borowicz which could be on the could could still happen we're waiting on Amaya battle we're waiting on Katie B but Rose leaving the program hurts a little bit one of only three players to stay from the year before and to take the jump she took she was averaging close to four points as a true freshman and to come in and jump it to 14 points a game be a top 20 scorer in the entire Big Ten, to be such a threat to teams that they are literally scheming to take her away. Like Penn State, she dropped 31 in the second game where we took a victory against them. You go into the Big Ten tournament where you play Penn State right away, and they literally said after the game their whole game plan was to take Rose away and give problems to the Gophers in that full court press to be able to make sure that the ball isn't worked inside as much. And it worked, unfortunately, but... 
We didn't think that was going to be the last time you'd see Rose Mashat in the maroon and gold, and now it is. I think it's a huge impact for the Gophers. Not only was she a top 20 scorer in the Big Ten, but she was a top five rebounder in the Big Ten. Her impact on the boards is crazy. She helped this team get so many second chance opportunities this past year. She was constantly getting double doubles, which was immense for this Gophers team. And the second chance opportunities are what kept this team in the games, even through some of those losses, 11 wins, 19 losses, even through some of those 19 losses. She was the reason they were still in those games, getting double doubles and giving second chance opportunities on the offensive end of the floor. So that is going to be a huge loss, a huge departure. The Gophers are still waiting to hear if the transfer in Sophie Hart is also staying as well. If she's gone too, that interior presence is very lacking for the Minnesota Gophers. So hopefully Hart, Hart will stay, but this is a huge loss to the front court, a huge loss to the program in general. And now who knows where we go from here? I mean, the next steps is obviously finding a coach and finding out about Amaya Battle and KDB and even Maggie Zanano. You got to find out about those players still, but this one cuts deep. This one hurts the most. She was basically one of the only leaders that was returning and now you lose that leader could it be solely from the coaching change I don't know maybe but when asked after the tournament in a presser after it was just Rose and Amaya battle in there with the media and they had asked is it safe to say that you guys are returning and I have this video on my old phone. I just switched phones, so I don't have it. Otherwise, I would post it. But Amaya Battle jumped in, and she said, yeah, she already signed a lease with the other freshman, and she's excited for it. Now, again, this is all prior to Coach Whalen leaving. But that was – you could see it right away. And Rose kind of, like, smiled and, like, looked down. And she had times in general where she just could be quieter and she could be – um like just kind of laugh off the questions because sometimes the questions are silly from the media. I mean, I'll be straight with it. It's true. But I did find it curious. I remember looking at that video. I remember watching it happen. And I was like, that was an interesting response. I wonder if she's already thinking about it. And that was prior to coach Waylon leaving. So when coach Waylon, Waylon officially was not going to be the coach anymore, I really had huge doubts that Rose would be back, but I was hoping I had my fingers crossed and alas, it happened. She's on the way out, and we wish her nothing but the best here at Lockdown Golden Gophers, but we definitely will miss her moving forward. Now, this core of freshmen definitely have to be the leaders moving forward, and hopefully as they continue to grow and build the program with the younger players coming up to continue to build a foundation. That is priority number one for the women's hoops team. Similar to what we discussed for the men's team, we do not want this to become a two-year feeder program where a player plays two years, they show they can play at the highest level when it comes to high majors and contribute on a team that's not winning, and then they be bounce to a, a competitor, a contender. They bounce to a top-tier team. We do not want to become a feeder program for those teams, so you got to find a way to keep that youth here, keep them developing, and build a foundation that's what needs to be next for the Minnesota Golden Gophers when it comes to hoops. And that's going to wrap it for us here at Locked On Golden Gophers. Thank you for listening. Let me know your thoughts below on everything hoops wise. What needs to happen? Who do you want to see added? Who needs to stay? What do you want to see from the young freshmen as they continue to develop? Drop it all in the comments below and be sure to hit subscribe. This is Kane Rob signing off. I'll see you tomorrow. Row the boat. Sky Yuma. Go Gophers. We're talking hockey tomorrow.